Good morning, everyone. It is the 22nd of February, Monday morning, 2021. And I've entitled this uh, message this morning, The Gospel. The Gospel. You know, you can never proclaim the gospel enough. And there's so many times what is portrayed as the gospel is something totally different than what the Bible proclaims is the gospel. So this morning, I just want to talk a little bit about what are the distinctions between the true gospel of Jesus Christ and the gospel out there that is perpetrated by 90% of so-called Christianity. I just want to talk to you a little bit about that this morning. Um, we know that the gospel means good news. Good news. Now the question is, is good news for everyone? Is it for everyone? We're also told that Jesus Christ came in the world to save his people from their sins. And he did it. He accomplished it at the cruel and rugged cross of Calvary. He came to save his people from their sins. We have the account of him being born in a manger, being raised by Mary and Joseph. And as he began to go into ministry, how the chief rulers, the Pharisees, the scribes came against him. And eventually they caused him to be crucified. Now he freely laid his life down for that was his purpose of coming into the world to lay his life down for his people. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities and by his stripes we are healed. Isaiah 53. Well, what would modern Christianity try to proclaim? From the time that I was a little child, I was taught that men had a free will and they could either choose Christ or reject Christ. They could either uh, accept Jesus into their heart or reject Jesus from their heart. But I was never taught that God is the one that determines who are recipients of his grace. I was never taught the great doctrine of predestination. I was often told that you can become anything you want to be if you set your mind to it. I was taught that you could determine your own destiny by your own choices and your hard work and by the sweat of your brow, <laughs> by your um, getting the best education and, and on and on and on it goes. Man does not control his own destiny. God is the controller of men's destiny. There are many, many chapters in the Bible that show the election of God, of his people, including Romans 8, 28 through 39, 
including the ninth chapter of Romans, including the, the first and second chapter of Ephesians, including the 17th chapter of John. I'm giving you references to back up what I'm saying. And if you are holding on to the doctrine of free will this morning, which, by the way, the doctrine of free will, Arminianism is nothing more than sin, uh, synonymous with Roman Catholicism because they're both works-based doctrines. Other chapters you can go to to validate what I'm saying is the 17th chapter of John the 6th chapter of John, the 10th chapter of John, the 1st chapter of Colossians, the 1st and 2nd chapter of Galatians, the 1st chapter of 1st Peter, the 2nd chapter of 1st Peter, the book of Jude, All of the book of Isaiah, specifically the 40th chapter of Isaiah, the 45th chapter of Isaiah, the 53rd chapter of Isaiah. I've given you enough to do your homework on what I'm setting forth this morning. Philosophers. Humanists, secularists, all agree that man has a free will. True Christians deny that man has a free will. True Christians affirm the gospel truth that all men are born and conceived in sin. They're dead in their trespasses and sin. They're totally depraved. All true Christians affirm the unconditional election of God, because that's what scripture affirms in the passages that I've just aforementioned. Many people have portrayed a false doctrine through, down through history, just to name a few. Uh, one of the one of the main false teachers down as a in our contemporary time has been Billy Graham, who would get up in a stadium of 50,000 people and say, God loves you. Billy Graham is not God. God does not love everyone. God loves the people that he has given his life for, the ones he shed his blood for. There are two kinds of people on the face of the earth, according to Romans 9. There are Jacobs and there are Esau's. There are vessels of wrath fit, fitted for destruction, and there are vessels of honor. And I know this may shock some people that hear this for the first time, but if you read your Bible, you'll find that what I'm telling you is absolutely fact. God does not love everyone, but he does love his elect from everlasting to everlasting. We're told in Romans 9, the children being not yet born, not having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand. Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. The good news is for Jacob. Is the good news for you as Christ shed his precious blood on the cruel and rugged cross at Calvary for you? Has he become... But did he become your sin bearer when he hung upon the cruel and rugged cross of Calvary? Did he cause you to be born again by his spirit? Another very crucial passage of scripture to look at is John 3. Now some people build their whole theological structure on John 3.16. 
but they forget the rest of the chapter. Yes, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, that the world through him might be saved. Is he talking about the all of the world without exception? Or is he talking about the world of people that he died for, from every tongue, every people, and every nation? Well, he told Nicodemus, Nicodemus came to him by night and was seeking truth. And Jesus Christ told him the truth. Jesus said, you must be born again. The spirit bloweth where it listeth, and no man knoweth the sound thereof. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit of God. Have you been born again? Has God revealed to you that he has died for your sins, that he's predestinated you unto adoption into the family of God? Has he forgiven all of your sins according to his precious blood? Has he elected you? Has he chose you in him before the foundation of the world? I'm teaching the true gospel this morning. I'm not teaching a Arminian Roman Catholic free will doctrine. There have been many down through history that have taught that false doctrine, including Pelagius, Charles Finney, John Wesley, Billy Graham, Rick Warren, and then we find people that came onto the scene that started teaching a, a lot of other false doctrines like Schofield and his Schofield Reference Bible. But at the core of the false doctrines is the denial of original sin, the um, Affirmation that man has a free will, which is a lie from the pit of hell. It's Luciferian in doctrine. Coming against the great doctrines of predestination, election, particular, particular redemption. The unfailing grace of God. The efficacy of his blood. Well, now we have evangelicals and Catholics together signing an agreement that brings to bear what my dad told me when I was 12 years old. That at one time, Larry, he said, all of these denominations will be under one umbrella. Well, that they pretty well accomplished that objective. You have people like Dr. James Dobson with Focus on the Family through the years bringing in psycho garbage into the church. And Rick Warren authoring his Purpose Driven Lies. Why do you think now that we have people in high authority going into Rome? Why do you have, um, you know, I'm having a cup of coffee with some cream in it. You know, just black coffee by itself is fine, but if you put a little cream in it, it kind of tastes a little better. Well, people have drunk the Roman Catholic Armenian coffee. And what's the cream in the coffee of Arminianism? Free will. It makes it taste better if you think you have a hand in your own salvation. The coffee of Arminianism, the cream is free will. 
It appeals to the flesh. It makes a person believe that they are in control of their own salvation and they're in control of their own destiny. And it denies the efficacy of the blood of Christ and the completed work of Christ on the cruel and rugged cross of Calvary. I'm showing a distinction between uh, tr the true gospel of Jesus Christ and the Roman Catholic Council of Trent Arminian gospel, false gospel. What can take away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that washes white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. And when before the throne I stand in him complete, he died my soul to save. My lips will still repeat, Jesus paid it all. You had no hand in your salvation. We were dead in our trespasses and sin. We didn't have just a bent toward sin. I live out here in Pineville, Missouri, and we have a lot of what I call John Wesley trees. They're bent over like this. We don't have just a bent toward sin. We're dead in our trespasses and sin. We're born and conceived in sin. And unless we're born again by the Spirit of God, we'll remain in that dead state. But God, who's rich in mercy, for his great love, while we were yet in our sins, for God's people, he saved us with his blood. But he had known us before the foundation of the world and he'd chosen us to be predestinated into adoption we were told in Ephesians 1 and 2 that he works all things after the counsel of his own will not man's will God has his will I never said man doesn't have a will what I said is man does not have a free will. Now, once we're born again, we have liberty in Christ. We're not interested. True Christians are not interested in inalienable rights. They're not interested in uh, a universal document, Constitution, Declaration of Independence and Bill of Rights. We have liberty in Christ. We've been translated into the kingdom of God's dear son. Behold, all things are new. We don't look to government. We don't look to Biden. We haven't drunk in the Biden or Trump Kool-Aid. We, we're not drinking the Pelosi Kool-Aid or the Cruz Kool-Aid, or any of the any of the rest of the politicians. They're all pretty much equally corrupt, are they not? Jesus Christ told the lady of Samaria, if you would ask of me, I would give you living water. She said, give me of this water. Have you been a partaker of the living water of Jesus Christ? People want to spend all their time on the pandemic, on the lockdown, on the anti-social distancing, on wearing a diaper on your face, on taking the Lucifer vaccinations, and how many Hundreds of people have already died from these vaccinations. Why do you think that 
there was protection given to these big pharma companies that they could not be sued. Well, let me tell you something. I serve the great physician. The great physician now is here, sympathizing Jesus. And so this morning, the true gospel is in contradistinction to all of the world's systems, whether it be socialism, communism, Zionism, Mohammedism, Hinduism, Arminianism, Catholicism, Christianity. We're told in the book of Acts that they were called Christians first at Antioch. Jesus Christ asked the apostles, Whom do men say that I am? And they said, Well, some say that you're a prophet. Some say you're Elijah and so on. He says, But whom do you say that I am? And Peter said, Thou art the Son of the living God. Jesus didn't tell Peter, Well, your free will showed you that. <laughs> no, Christ said, Flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father in heaven. The only way we can come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ is if it's been revealed to us by the Spirit of God. And we've been born again by his spirit. That's the true gospel. Many people want to rely on their own abilities. They want to pick themselves up by their bootstraps. I can't even walk without him holding my hand. Most of the time he's carrying me. And people often say, oh, Larry uses his Christianity for a crutch. Yes, I do. Without Christ, I'm nothing. We are told in Scripture that we're less than grasshoppers in his sight. By him are all things created that are made in heaven and the earth. He is before all things, and by him all things consist. Read it in Colossians chapter 1. John chapter 17 verse 2 says that he's put all flesh under his feet. That includes the tares and the wheat. So this morning, I want you to check out what I've told you. I've given you a lot of homework. I'll repeat the key chapters I want you to study if you're interested in seeing if what I'm saying is true or not. Check out Isaiah 45 where it says he creates evil. He does all of these things. He's sovereign over evil. Check out 53rd chapter of Isaiah. Check out John 6, John 10, John 17. Read the first part of John 3, chapter 3 of John. Read uh, Romans 8, the golden chain of salvation. Read it. Romans 28 through 39. Read the ninth chapter of Romans. Read the book of Jude. Read the book of Ephesians chapter 1 and 2. Read chapter 2 of Galatians. It's not of works lest any man should boast. It's all of grace. Well, that's my message this morning. The true gospel versus the false gospel. And Rome and 
and the Pope are the Antichrist. They're portraying the same thing that the Armenian churches are proclaiming, the doctrine of free will. In fact, in the Council of Trent, says that if any man denies that man has a free will, let him be anathema. Well, the Bible itself denies that man has a free will. So therefore, I anathematize the Roman Catholic Church. Let them be anathema. It's not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but God that showeth mercy. Well, may the good Lord be with you this morning. And I would ask that you would share this message with all of your friends and loved ones. The true gospel of Jesus Christ. May the good Lord be with you today is my prayer. God bless.